Thank you for the attendance of the short notice, Dr. Sheath. I'm disappointing you, Lord Van Zees. You completely betrayed the agreed policy of both Scotland Yard and the prosecutor's office. Betrayal is not in my nature, as long as the truth isn't compromised. If it is, if there's even a hint of wrongdoing, then no matter, human concerns are disgruntles. I will pursue the matter to the bitter end, as would any prosecutor worth his salt. Let's go, Van Zeeks. <laughs> Let's go, Van Zeeks. Alright, you took the victim's life by means of a machine that you constructed in your workshop. What the hell? Alright, uh, yeah. I thought, I thought he was talking about <laughs> Professor. Alright, as the investigating coroner, you were the first on the scene to examine the victim's body. It is the belief of the defense that you could have collaborated, uh, I don't know why I said all that, collaborated with each other and were both complicit in the crime. And where's your evidence? At present, we have no definitive evidence, but we do have a significant clue. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, of course, the waxwork. This model of the killer known as the professor who was sentenced to death 10 years ago. You don't need to tell me. I witnessed the man's execution with my very own eyes and officially pronounced him dead. Yeah, but why? What's wrong? What's with the wrong time, hey, Sheath? Is that so? Come to the newspaper reports from the time, one on the night following his execution. The killer came back to life. Don't waste my time. The sole witness to the mysterious event. It's you, Mr. Drebber, wasn't it? Well, you can't deny his fucking names in the newspaper. If what you saw in the graveyard that night 10 years ago wasn't some chilling fiction but reality, it would make you privy to a very great secret of Dr. Sheaves. A secret so profound, it could compel the coroner to agree to collaborate in your evil scheme, in fact. Oh. Drebber, you agree? No, Drebber's the mastermind. Tell the card. Tell everyone the truth of what you saw that night in the low gate cemetery. Oh, shit. Too clever for his own good. Alright, Alright, Monokuma. What an interesting twist. When at time, not one person would take me seriously. When at the time. Yeah, here we are, ten years later, and suddenly my story matters. And in a court of law, too. Because it's fucking true, you dumbass. <laughs> Very well, then, if everyone so wishes. Let's be frank, I'll tell you the truth of what happened that night, but what it's, what it's worth. Oh. Seems like they got a plan. They've got, got some colluding still. Alright. Exactly what you stumbled across in Logay Cemetery. Well, there's like three, three of these guys, so I feel like it's a pressing matter you have to go through. All right, let's hear his damn testimony. The reason I was in Lowgate Cemetery at all 10 years ago was for a spot of moonlighting, shall we say. Yes, the illustration in that new paper article was based on what I witnessed that night. But, thinking back now, I realized that I never actually saw the professor. Soon afterwards, I was visited by a young woman who sculpted a model of me from the wax. Then I gave up my dream of becoming a scientist, and it was all because of that newspaper article. Huh? How the hell did he ruin his life? Wait a minute. Yeah, you're claiming you didn't actually see the professor now. Of course. You have to have a screw loose if you believe a corpse will come back from the dead. You're saying this article is... Not what the paper is printed on? I think that would describe it perfectly, yes? Man, Drebber's like... I mean, it's a cool design he has. All the robotics and stuff. That grin, that smile. That's like, that's an evil man right there. 
He said moonlighting. Grave robbing to paradise. What? The repurposes. All right, weird name. Cause we make great many headaches. In the end, I have to leave the university. I was the only paper with the bad grace to identify me unambiguously. I might add. Let's see. Who drew the illustration for this article? But yes, that was the reporter who exposed me. He sketched that right in front of me as I described the scene. Alright. Obviously, as time ticked on, I barely regretted what I've done. I claim to have seen something I nearly uh, truly saw. Foolish, very foolish. Well, counsel, for the defense, you may proceed to the cross examination now. Um, then we're going to go from the top, stand from the top. A moonlighting, you mean grave robbing, do you? Uh, I'm sure you need to look at the graveyard scene. In my opinion, to go to the answer to that. Any major hospital? A hospital? In order to better understand the human body, the study and anatomy is crucial to medical science. Alright, I understand. You know, I say doubt to that. Maybe, maybe any, like, intact specimen. That's what we were told ourselves. Every time we stole into the graveyard, a knight spade in hand. Record, you could expect the gravest of consequences. Alright. Yeah, you need some money. Uh, this was the important one, maybe. Seen it with that mind's eye, huh? Resurrection is impossible, isn't it? I'm pretty sure he didn't die. Before he... I bet you got taken away into the grave. You have some evidence that proves I encountered the professor that night. Do we? I don't think so. Oh, hold on. Another thing we have. If we have anything at all, Miss Naldo, I know. I need to present it against that irritating backtracking statement of his. Point is, the night was a pivotal moment in his life. Alright, that's not it. 
Yeah, Madame Tuss spells, I believe. Didn't expect to run into her again like this 10 years later. As I explained, I went by the name published in the article. Alright, I found the man. Paid him five pounds, that was pretty big back in, the, in those days, right? I purchased something else from you that day. What did she purchase? Did you? I can't say I remember. What was it? Madame. It's camera. Oh. Oh yes, I made a point of taking it with me whenever I made an excursion in any cemetery. You yeah, took a camera with you, sir. What end? Here we go, the cow is going to get some play. I still have it, Monsieur. It is a part of a special exhibit in my house of horrors. I'm very meticulous about such details. It is the Tuss Spells way. Wait, but I have it here. It would seem then that this is the very camera Mr. Driver took with him. Yes, interesting. Uh, yeah, can we lift that? There's nothing here, right? Yeah, we'll be all, yeah. He's very keen on everything being as true as the life. Yeah, th then what does this blood mean then? <laughs> Open this up. Yeah, we examined this already. Alright, so this blood might, might be something. Alright, let's go here. Yeah, maybe it's the camera that's e evidence. Now he's expelled as a result, damn. Combine your knowledge of science with knowledge of stage magic. To create various experimental machines intended to discriminate never before seen technology. And use those deceptive machines to trick the government and private investors into giving you money. Professor Albert Hairbrain was just your latest victim, wasn't it? Whoever you are talking about. I have no recollection of doing anything of the sort. What's Drebber up to? Well, why he suddenly changed his tune and recant his claim? What circumstances? If he missed to have seen the professor emerging alive from his grave 10 years ago, he would expose a secret in Dr. Sheep's past that she would desperately want to hide. Then, if Drebber were to betray her, there would be no reason for her uh, to continue to cooperate. There's only one way around him. I have to prove he really did see it. Prove he really did see the professor's cause coming back from dead as he originally claimed. Does he have a picture? He got this camera, saying he'd never took a photo of it. Alright, I'm gonna present the camera. Alright. Not quite not quite there yet. Here is this statement. 
Strange happening at Low Gay Cemetery, which you now deny. We went to fetch the police at the time, you know, I was shaking like a leaf. But I didn't believe a word of it, in fact, I was very nearly arrested myself. So we went to the papers instead. I started big with the London news, but unsurprisingly, they didn't want to know either. In the end, though, it was just reports from the gossip rags, the gutter press, that came to get my story, and spread like the plague through the capital as gossip hungry Londoners lapped up to the table. The table. <laughs> the tail! Table, tail. And yet, only two or three of them actually interviewed me personally. Most of the accounts turned out to be very interpretive ghost stories. What about the article in the Daily Circus? That particular journalist found me at my dormitory. I don't know how, but he discovered my name. So I recounted to him exactly what happened uh, that night. And from your description, he, draw, he drew this... Whoa! I just realized who this artist is. This fucking Asman. <laughs> I just realized it now, after he showed us that. This picture. That's another hen. Ah, uh, the camera's not... I think we've exhausted a lot of options, right? Hold it! We've already read this already, right? This is probably where the statement is. Should we just do this? <laughs> Maybe, let's try. Objection. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, Miss Trevor, but I don't believe that. Don't believe what? Your latest claim. You did see the professor on that night 10 years ago. All right, don't worry. There's a few things that's linked up to this. We know a few things. But I was there and you were not. I know what I didn't see. The illustration with this article was drawn based upon what you told the journalist. Where you witnessed. Figure emerging from the tomb. Wearing an iron mask. Oh shit. Yes, when the killer was tried 10 years ago. It was decided in the closed court rulings that the man would wear the mask to hide his identity. It wasn't to be removed even during his execution and subsequent burial. Now even the prison wardens were to see the man's face. But obviously, the provision of this mask was not public knowledge. Alright. I, did, I, did, I just did it because... Because it was just a very detailed explanation. <laughs> a lonely student of the University of London suddenly wouldn't have known about the condemned man's mask. So, unless you actually seen the professor that night. It's inconceivable that the artist would have included the mask in that is illustration. Alright, yeah, I, I was just saying it was the photo, right? Yeah, that works. Alright, order, order. Well, Mr. Dropper. He's like, fuck you. Vile scene, isn't it? If you look closely. Yeah. Came to my senses and realized that. I've been mistaken. You're still saying you didn't see her. You were certainly sticking to that story, witness. And amend your testimony to explain exactly how you think your eyes deceived you. Of course, of course. 
Only too happy to uh, uh, only too happy to oblige. Still gonna concede. No, I, the deeper the lie goes, the easier the truth gets. Uh was a fellow grave robber at work. Hold it. Fellow grave robber? What are you talking about? Well, I wasn't the only one busy in the cemetery that night. Other body snatchers were at work. Of course, when I saw one emerging from the hole, he dove. My heart very nearly stopped. So, the terrifying sign I just saw, you see. He claimed he was just another student. On equally insalubrious, uh, salubrious business as yourself. Alright, where would metal mass to protect from the bacteria? It's using such a master protector's anonymity, when you say. There's more to the start, isn't there? The algo goes on to say, In the next second, a gunshot rang out. Suddenly from behind, the bullet pierced the resurrected man's chest. His breath then stilled once more. You might assume that the sexton discovered the miscreant in that work, perhaps. Fired upon one of them. If Grey Deer had shot someone in the cemetery, I think it might have been a rather big news, my lord. I only assume it was the embellishment bolted. Uh, okay, here we go. Excuse me. Excuse me. Turn to spells to take you out on Mr. Shlomes. Oh la la, pardon. I was lost in my thoughts. Would you be fair to say that Mr. Drebber's last remark was significant to you in some way? I thought it was a little strange, that is all. How Monsieur Drebber could claim this now. If you don't mind me saying, madame, what are you talking about? Well, when I met you ten years ago at your university dormitory, you accounted to me about your adventures in the cemetery, non? Including the gunshot. Stop. Oh shit. You might want to watch your tongue, you know. Objection. Here we go. Have a care, Drebber. There's no way, no way to speak. That's no way to speak a lady. A gentleman of first. Let's go, Van Zeeks. Of course. You know, first, Van Zeeks, I thought you were a pain in the ass, but... You know, now we're like working together, kind of. Reminiscent to Phoenix and Edgeworth. I'm um, uh, right in Edgeworth, I guess you could say. None. Be very explicit about the details. About the mask that fi the figure was wearing. And the blood that smiled over you when he was shot. Oh, here we go. This is where the camera was played. Enough. Shut up, woman. You make this all up. Come on, get in there, Van Zeeks. I will do. Oh. Even the judge is going to have a fight. Mrs. Drebber. Yes. You fruit the account just given by M Madame Tuspels. I have no recollection of ever saying those things. Come on, do you really expect us to believe you? Control your self counsel. I will not permit baseless accusations in my courtroom. Right. Under the circumstance, I think it's best to supplement your testimony with a statement to clarify your position on this witness. Very well. Uh, this is where I will get him with the camera. One. There was no gunshot from behind me at all. Nor any splatter of blood. Alright, you're fucked. Mr. Drebber, do you remember this camera? But that is the camera from the Faithful Nine. Yes, we uh, borrowed it from the House of Horrors. It's the camera you took with you to the cemetery that night, Mr. Drebber. And is that supposed to be sin uh, significant? This kind of camera is rarely seen in our homeland. So my colleague and I were keen to examine it closely. We noticed that the lens extend forwards on the end of some bellows. Like this. What's that? There. Just on the bellows. It looks like a dark red stain. Ah. That's right. It's a rather conspicuous mark here on the bellows, in fact. Good lord, are you suggesting? Yes, my lord. It would appear to be a splatter of blood. 
Something that could be confirmed with a simple chemical test. Isn't that right, Dr. Sheath? It would be difficult to determine if it was human blood or not the blood of some animal. Yes, to test whether or not it's blood at all is simple enough. I propose that Madame Tuspel's testimony was correct, and that on the night in question ten years ago, you were splattered with blood from the gunshot wound. Well, I... Now, furthermore... You really did witness the condemned professor emerging from his tomb. Here we go, let's go. Let's go, he's shocked. Oh, what are you got? Well, why? Why would he want to do that? Well, not for his own gain, it would seem. Well, who's then? Who could benefit? Mr. Dredd is obviously lying in order to protect somebody. My goodness, he's shielding someone? Yes, my lord. And clearly, it's someone who doesn't want the truth about the professor coming back to life to be exposed. Well, Council, who's it then? Who is this witness trying to protect by lying about what he saw that night? You know who. Take that. The obvious answer is Dr. Sheath. Sheath. What? Whatever do you mean? Imagine if the convict who'd been sentenced to death was not in fact killed. Imagine if that was to come to life. What are you insinuating? And imagine if the convict in question was the country's most hated mass murderer. Is, I'm, should, should I guess that the professor is Chief's husband? 100% right? I bet you. That would be an unprecedented scandal. Alright, what well you got, Zanzeeks? This is beyond a joke. Need I point out that the dead cannot come back to life? What are you suggesting would mean? That the execution never actually happened? Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it would Objection. mean. Once a man is sent to the gallows, he hangs. No one could escape, not in Great Britain. Objection. But the fact is, there was a witness for, to the fact that the man did escape his hanging. If that was really true, counsel, the implications of misconduct would not stop at the supervising coroner. He would taint the honor of the entire ju uh, judiciary from the ground up. Yeah, sure. Anything to win this case. Anything to win this trial. <laughs> exactly because of those monumental repercussions. The Dr. Sheaf would con uh, consent to any demand made of her by someone who threatened to expose the secret. Even if it meant being complicit in a crime. You mean... So who's back blaming who? Greba. I mean, the Dr. Sheaf was a collaborating... In Mr. Drebber's wicked scene. She was coerced into collaborating in order to protect her decade old secret. Alright, she switched the dead body of Mr. Asman with the waxwing model and fabricated the autopsy report. Alright, now we got her. Damn, he's got the foot up. It's been a while. Lord Van Zeeks. Pray forgive my freshly file, uh, filled hollow chalice and a whole raft of other discourtesies now. Goodness me. Just the sort of tall tale Londoners who enjoy, I grant you. An executed killer rising from the dead, a Scotland Yard cover up, a conspiracy at the highest levels. So let me ask you one thing. What's that? If the condemned man really did emerge from his tomb that night, only to be shot. In the chest. Who pulled the trigger? And disposed of him forever. Oh, well, well, I have no idea at the moment. We have too little information to work that out on, at present, I think. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, Van Zeeks, I don't know about that one. Well, there's no place for wild fantasies. Have you consi considered this, my learned Nipponese friend? Consider what? Do you realize just what a dangerous endeavor it would be to coerce this woman to such a criminal activity? 
It's uh, Tandemount. Tandemount? Yeah, there we go. He's declaring war on the entire British police force and Judas. Judasy? How do you say it? Don't worry, we'll get to it. I'm not pronouncing it. I'm like zero to zero to ten. Uh, no, I just need a pronunciation. Judiciary. What? Judiciary. Judiciary. Is that how you say it? Do judiciary. I don't know why I can't say. It. I think my mouth's tired though. Uh, judiciary. Quite. How to imagine any sort of money being offered for research could warrant it. To rely on someone, uh, stage deception when so much is at stake would be madness. Oh well, well. I suppose. And this was no petty crime either. The victim was murdered. A man who already invested money in the venture and would be instrumental in future profits too. Oh yeah, I got, I got the, I got the motive. Oh no, I, I got it, Trevor. Don't, don't worry, bro. I got the mower. You bring in uh, Asmund's name, I know where to go now. There is a contract, that's very true. I got evidence. The motive for this case runs deep though. I can feel it. Because he was the journalist who ruined his life. That's why he killed uh, Asmund. It wasn't money at all. He was trying to kill Mr. Asmund, but why? What was his motive then? I know his motive. Your time is up, my learned friend. I say you have one last chance before the jury loses their patience with this charade. Alright, I got, I got it. Well, we're not going to talk about who killed the... What's his name? That's it. Nah, the dodge. You see that? How do you explain why this engineer is so all caution to the wind and threatening his own country? Nice dodge, Kazuma. That's name? Kazuma Sogi. So, Council, present your evidence. Alright. Who exactly was Mr. Asmund to Dreba? There's a connection that the, no one's seen yet. Yep. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, two pieces? Easy. Yes, my lord. The evidence that established the motive explains why the victim... Uh, why the witness, I mean, wanted the victim dead right here. Yes, these two. Take that! Mr. Dreber, I have here the contract that you signed with Mr. Asman. Yes, that's right. A very document in fact. That proves I have no reason to kill the man. No, I'm afraid not. As it turns out, this contract actually helps to establish the real motive for the murder you committed. It does. Well, I never. What are you talking about? Read it again, you idiot. I'm not finished. In order to demonstrate what your motive really was, I need this contract. And one other piece of evidence. One other evidence. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you, Dreba. This is it, the nail in the coffin. Take that. It's this newspaper article, my lord. That was written 10 years ago. And every detail has been examined already. What can it possibly tell us? That drivel should never have been written. It's typical good oppressed nonsense. That means nothing. Oh, it's not the contents. There's something significant about this newspaper article and the contract I have in common. Really? And... It's the common link. That shows very clearly why you were determined to kill Mr. Odie Asman. Seems to defend has uncovered something the rest of us have missed. See, even Van Zeeg, so my learned friend, point out what these two pieces of evidence have in common. Where exactly is the link? I found it. It's right here, my friend. Take that! What these two pieces of evidence have in common. It's a signature. Signature? The signature on the illustration that accompanies the 10 year old article and the signature on the contract. Belong to the same person. What? Ah. 
As the card has heard, this illustration was drawn 10 years ago by the newspaper reporter who found Mr. Drebber and interviewed him about his ordeal. If you look closely, the reporter's signature can be seen in the bottom right corner of this drawing. And if you look at the contract here, which was signed between the witness and the victim last year, you could clearly see Mr. Asma's signature uh, at the bottom. Good lord, yes, they're identical. In short, the journalist who drew the illustration and wrote the article published about Mr. Drover 10 years ago was the victim of this case, Mr. Odi Asman. Why would that constitute a motive for the witness to murder Asman? Yeah, come on, man. You think back. You remember that Mr. Drever talked about that article in his testimony. Grave robbing, you say? Yes. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't give a shit. We've seen this. He said it ruined his life. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, there we go. I wish you could skip this path. At the time, you were a student at the University of London who dreamt of becoming a scientist. However, this single newspaper article changed your entire life. So Mr. Asman used to be a newspaper journalist, did he? He did, my lord. In fact, it's widely held belief that Asman managed to position himself at the heart of his criminal network. Network? Thanks to his many dubious connections he made during his time as a reporter. Alright. So, you had to give up on your dream and leave university. You lost everything. Eventually you find yourself working in the field of science, but only in the shadows. And all because of that article. Written by Mr. Asman. Alright, I can't say it. Enough! <laughs> there we go. Not done yet. Stop this endless drivel by my life. Yeah, my voice is like gone. Shot. Alright. Soon later, you knew your ideas would be stolen and pandered by some wretch or other. After all, yeah. It still exists today, people <laughs> stealing ideas and panning on. But apparently a pattern isn't really... You know, isn't the end-all be-all of stuff. I think. Or maybe it is actually. Like if somebody steals your DM pan net, they have like the Yeah. Okay, maybe it is the end all be all, but I don't think I don't think it's that yeah, I don't think uh I think you could fight for it if you have like everything. If you got claims to back it up all the all the evidence. Alright, good oh whoa, evidence. What could you possibly have to disprove the idea that I was happy to leave the university because I lacked talent? <laughs> I don't know. Is it this? Uh, it might be this, actually. Fostering... What is that? What is that word? <laughs> Burgeoning? Is that how you say it? Burgeoning. Is 
Is that the answer? I don't I don't think it is. Do click. Seems rather ironic. What can you possibly have to disprove the idea that I was happy to leave? I don't even know. <laughs> what could it be? Well, I got this. Take that. You remember this, Mr. Drebber? We found out your workshop. Is that... A Royal Society Trophy for Excellence in Science? What exactly is this trophy, Council? It's the greatest honor that could be bestowed on your young scientist, my lord. There's no higher accolade. He recognizes emerging talent and promises a bright future. Alright. Okay, yeah, there we go. I think I think we were trying to prove that Mr. Joe was happy. Like, I don't know. Like it didn't fuel the thing, right? You lost everything. You had no more future. Your talents would go wasted. I was a bit confused. Yeah. Is it this newspaper article? I don't know when you realized who Mr. Asman was, but when it dawned on you that he was the same journalist who 10 years ago ruined your life. It was abundantly clear. I had no intentions of forgiving the man. I bet you Do Dr. Sheaf's run away. I bet you Lord Stronghold comes in. This might be the end to this. He's going to fold. Oh my god. It's the Lord Stronghold. No, it's Dr. Sheath. Ah, uh, fine. Please, this is Runner's cost now. What? I admit him. All of him. What? What are you doing? Exactly as the Japanese man said. I was coerced into going along with this man's plot to murder the victim. On the condition that he kept my daily little secret. Don't know why it was li li little. Daily secret for 10 years ago. No. Good lord. Oh my god. <laughs> Dr. Sheaf, do you realize what you're saying, woman? Well, what? A gentleman first, huh? It's all true. That day. When I arrived at the Crystal Tower and saw the birdcage, I had nearly stopped beating. That memory from a decade ago that I did my best to bury deep inside myself. It was the professor again, staring me in the face, but it was a waxwork. And then before I had the chance to react, I noticed something else. There was a note tucked inside the model's jacket. Dr. Sheath. You will go along with my plan. Alright, oh, shit. This is how it this is how it happened. For someone who knows the truth about what really happened that night ten years ago. All the instructions were there in the note. Every deal was meticulously written out. So she's... Whoa, so she did this twice. That's crazy. That's crazy. She, she did it the first time with the professor, but she did it a second time here right now. Chief, you crazy person. There's really no other It had to be done to protect the, uh, Judas... What are you saying? <laughs> Judas C? Uh, Shui. Uh, Judas, yeah. Uh, I can only apologize now. Uh, that, that was just my, uh. Maybe I have to cut that part off. Uh, why on earth would you buckle now? Let me hit the auto. Judiciary. Judiciary. All right, never mind. I'm never gonna get that. Judiciary. Judiciary. Shit. Shit. So then, Mr. Driver, what do you say to that? Wait, let me put a marker here. 
So I don't forget. Okay. Should it goes well saying? You mid your part in the two then. I mid nothing. At all. Whoa. Have you forgotten the kinesis machine was ripped to shreds by an explosion? Showing me a minute to a crime. There's really no possible way to prove I did anything wrong. No, this is this always happens. Order, order. Whatever this man says, I admit everything. He threatened to expose my secret, so I went along with his plan. And Lord Van Zeek? Yes. I hope you accept my apologies. What happens next is in your hands, of course. Now we just send a mother into prison. I hereby present the final fans of this card. This trial is not the proper forum in which to pursue the alleged wrongdoings of Mr. Drebber. The defendant is Professor Albert Herbrain. Very true, it has slipped my mind. Isn't he one of your closest friends? As the court has heard, Dr. Sheath has admitted the allegations brought to the by the defense, thereby absolving the defendant of any possible guilt. Alright. You mean, alright, we did it, guys. At the present time, it is the conclusion of this card that the defendant was not involved in any wrongdoing. Does the prosecution have any objections? None. All right, we did it. Get the fireworks in. Without further ado, the judication of whatever, the deduceration. <laughs> Judiciary. Judiciarication. I don't know. I don't know. This doesn't feel quite right. Why did Dr. Chief suddenly admit to it like that? Is everything all right, Mr. Nardo, though? Like before, the way the trial is set to end now, the judge will certainly deliver a verdict of not guilty. But, is that really what we want? What the defense should be pushing for now is... If the judge gives his verdict now, Professor Herbin will be found not guilty, without any doubt. Something troubling you, perhaps? Yes, but it's probably nothing. In the Ann Chamber during the recess earlier, I did give Mr. Shlomo's my word though, didn't I? Told I'd pursue any doubts I had about the truth to the absolute last. If you gave Mr. Shlomo's your word, then it most certainly isn't nothing. And it means there's no only one right answer here. Yes, you're right. How did you Yeah, I don't know why I was ever waving. Objection. The defense objects to the trial ending at this time, my lord. I beg your pardon? We demand one final testimony. Oh my god. One final testimony? I have to, you have to pause it. Did you realize I'm about to adjudicate in favor of your client, I presume? What are you playing at now, my Nipponese friend? Why would we want to extract the conclusion of this trial at this point? No defense lawyer in his right mind would do that. It's now Hodo, what exactly are you thinking? The truth, the whole truth, and a way to bring it all out into the open. Right. It's an eye inside. Ah yes, one word of warning before I go. Yeah, 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 come on. Come on, I need to stop on a good pad. Well, I'll, I'll just sign. To the bare end, you understand, and do not follow. Let me get to the testimony, and then we stop there. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes knew. He must have deduced that this would happen. Yes, I'm here in court to advocate for my client. And to secure an acquittal. Obviously. But, that does not, uh, that's not all. I believe that I have a duty to the court to pursue the whole truth of the case until every last detail is laid bare. And that is why the defense Calls for further testimony from Dr. Sheath. Part 1. By the nature of your collaboration with Mr. Inok Drebber. 
In any case, it escaped your intention. I've already admitted to everything I did. The whole truth has already been revealed. So stop wasting everybody's time. Ah. This is lost you made very plain. The client will get the equivalent you wanted for him. There's simply no point tracking this business further with another tedious cross-examination. My eye! Pray forgive my careless handling of this hallowed bottle I slipped. That's what you call it? What's your objection, Lord Vizetis? Prosecution. Also calls for supplementary testimony from the witness. Don't be stupid. If there is more to this case that has yet to come to line, then I will join my learned friend in pursuing the facts until the bitter end. You'll what? Lord Van Ziegs. This is most irregular, to say the least. Oh, uh, as the prosecution also calls for it, I will uphold the request. Dr. Sheaf, you will testify for the coroner. Explain the full extent of your involvement in the murder apparently committed by Mr. Drebber. Aye. Very well. Alright. But this is it. Yeah, we, we got we gotta save it off. Uh yeah. Let's call it. I mean, can I exit the game? Uh which one do I go? Up here, I guess. Part four, Jesus, that's weird. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go back to the title. Uh, don't save. Uh, yes, please. And that's it. Yeah, that's it for this part. One last. Oh, uh, I think we're near the end though. But I think next session we'll do the last testimony, and then also continue on to episode four. I think I think there'll be like a bit more stuff. Um, uh, I bet you there's like a, another forty minutes of episode three left because we've got to deal with the conclusion and stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, it is getting interesting now. Um, I'm still, you know, we're still going for the not guilty acquittal, but we won that last statement. C, to pursue uh, her involvement with Miss, Mr. Drebber, right? And yeah, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this session of the great Ace Attorney. And I'll see you guys next time. And catch you guys later.